and the fully illustrated BBC book, More Record Breakers, is available from booksellers. Tomorrow at five past five, the Christmas Eve edition of Blue Peter, when you can join in the carols around the Christmas tree and enjoy the fun and games of the Blue Peter Panto. That's tomorrow at five past five. Back to today now for a Rent-A-Ghost special, Rent-A-Santa. I mean, they won't enjoy their Christmas very much if they find out I'm a ghost. Hey, there's the postman. Oh, the postman! <laughs> hey! There's some mail for you, Mr. Dutton. Oh! And for me. Yes, it looks like you're writing, Mr. Claypole. It is! Huh? Well, this quaint custom did not exist when I was alive, so I decided to send cards to my friends. The Seven of Hearts. Oh, thank you so much. <clears throat> Oh, Mr. Claypool. Yes, it is me. <laughs> I'll treasure it. I cannot understand why these lights do not work. I connected them up most carefully. <laughs> Hello, no, 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 the phone, Mr. Claypool. <laughs> this is Rent-A-Ghost. Let us haunt you, and you will be sure of a fright Christmas. Oh, never mind the advertising slogans. All I'm sure is there's going to be a cold Christmas. There's no heat in this concert hall. Seasonal greetings, Master Mika. I would like to shake your hand. Well, don't bother. It's already shaking. Now, look, don't you forget that the pantomime rehearsal starts at 7 o'clock tomorrow night. I want you spooks here and ready to help out. Certainly. Uh, what do you need? My head exam and for letting you take part. Oh, there is one thing. I shall be coming over to collect the money for the tickets you've sold so far. And when I get there, you can make me a nice cup of tea. <laughs> oh, Harold, you're anywhere. Hold this and pull. Why? It is a modern Christmas custom I heard Master Mumford talking about. What? Well, the modern slang for sausage is banger, is it not? Yes. Well, you said it is a modern Christmas custom to pull bangers. Oh. Crackers, you fool. Oh. It seems even stranger to pull crackers. It's a pity we haven't got a fairy for the top of the Christmas tree. Hey, hey that'll be my mum and dad. Look, you two better alter your appearance. Well, that's tidy up. Ooh. Hurry up and change us, Mr. Oh. Capo. Fine, now I'll go and let him, Mr. Oh. Bit. Mr. Oh, Capo, <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> Transform me at once. If you insist. <laughs> oh, Mr. Capo, stop it. <laughs> Don't be so silly. <laughs> Please, Mr. Capo, what are you doing? <laughs> Please, Mr. Capo, please let me down from here. <laughs> Coming! Merry Christmas, Mr. Yes, Seasonal greetings to you both. Oh. Would you care to pull a cracker with me? <laughs> Will you pull a cracker with me? No, thanks. I prefer pulling custard greens. How eccentric. I trust you both received that which I sent you for Christmas. Oh, uh, yes. Thank you very much. Oh. What did you give you for Christmas? Oh, well, I don't know what your father got. But I got diamonds. Diamonds? Yes, the Ten of Diamonds. Well, it's quite a novel idea, really. I mean, if he sends you a card every Christmas, you'll end up with a complete pack. In 52 years' time. Uh. <clears throat> Rent to Santa. Why do the tree light up when the phone rang? Perhaps it's a trunk call. <laughs> a trunk call! <laughs> 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 
That's a funny looking fairy. He got but it's ugly. Closer inspectors even uglier still. Oh, come on, Sheila. Let's get out of this mess. Uh, bye-bye, Dad. Bye-bye. Master Meeker is on his way over here. That was Mistress Meeker on the phone. She's very busy rehearsing the part of Aladdin. Oh, really? Then what's Mr. Davenport busy rehearsing on top of the Christmas tree? Oh, he is being a fairy. But because of his ugliness, he is not a success. <laughs> Get him down! Oh. <laughs> Your stupidity is mind-boggling. It would take two of you to make a half-wit. Now change me back at once. Oh, oh thank you. Good grief, I thought I saw an ugly big fairy beside the Christmas tree. I think it flew away. Seasonal greetings. Would you care to pull a cracker with me? A what? Pulling biscuits is a Christmas custom. Yeah, well, so is pulling legs. How novel. Oh, I guess pulling mm. legs is the Yuletide version of shaking hands. Oh. <laughs> All right, where is the money for the tickets you sold so far? Oh, uh, it's in the other office. No. You've got the tickets, does Mr. Davenport. you better check them. Oh, right. One, two, three, four, five. I trust this pantomime will not be as disastrous as the last concert given by the Meekers. But I seem to remember the audience expressed its appreciation by throwing flowers at them. Oh, they did. Unfortunately, they forgot to take them out of the pots. I will make Master Meeker a cup of tea. How many spoonfuls of sugar does he require? Twenty-two, twenty-three. Oh. Now, about our new Renter Ghost project, Renter Santa. Yeah. I've had some business cards printed. Oh, great. And all the profits are to go to charity, right? That's right. But when you hire yourselves out of Santa Claus, is it for parties at big department stores, understand? We don't want you interfering with the real Santa Claus. Oh, no. Have a cup of tea. Oh, thank you, Mr. Claypole. <laughs> oh, ah! What have you done? Oh, now, Mr. Make you some fresh. Oh, no, I'm not standing to be poisoned by you spooks. I shall go home and let Ethel do it. Go! Mr. Claypole! And don't you forget the rehearsal tomorrow night. Well, it seems we shall be very busy rehearsing the pantomime in the evening and doing rent to Santa by day. There won't be any rent to Santa unless we rehearse that jingle. Well, practice makes perfect. <clears throat> Too many stockings to fill for Christmas? Rent to Santa Claus a day. We'll deliver, come what may. You won't ever hear us knocking. But we'll fill your Christmas stocking. Sweets and toys and just a shade of magic stuff that dreams are made of. Chills and thrills and lots of fun. Merry Christmas, everyone. But father, I don't want to marry the vizier's son. It's Aladdin I love. Uh, Aladdin is not the man for you. I, the Sultan, forbid you to see him. Little does he know I am hiding a few feet away, secretly hiding. Not so loud, Ethel. You're supposed to be whispering behind the door. You said you wanted me to be heard in the circle. Yes, in this circle, not the Arctic circle. Now, Mark, to me. Where's the bad time you lot turned up? Get down. But these are the tame spooks I told you about. That's Mr. Claypole, Mr. Mumford and Mr. Davenport. This is Marjorie. She's playing the princess. I offer you seasonal greetings and would like to pull a leg with you. Oh, it is a pleasure to grasp the limb of such a lovely lady, Mistress Marjorie. You are tall, fair and beautiful. Mr. Claypole, you are short, dark and hands off my leg. Oh, you are indeed a sight to behold. Maybe, but I'm not a sight to be held. Oh, she loves me. No, she doesn't. Look, if you finish with your fun and games, perhaps we can get on with the rehearsal. Now, I want one of you to play the genie, and when Aladdin rubs a lamp, I want you to make a magical appearance. Bye -bye. <laughs> Good. Right, Ethel. Give them the cue. The princess's eyes have been flooding with tears, but she'll soon dry up when the genie appears. I am the genie of the lamp. What have you come as? Mitt Whittington. Turn again, Davenport. Look, I want one genie and one genie only. Well, since the genie lives inside the lamp, it must be me. Only I have the psychic skills necessary to make myself tiny to go inside me. Like this! Mr. Claypole, you cannot establish squatters' rights in Aladdin's lamp. Come on out of there. We'll resume rehearsals. Harold, coffee. Oh. I think a little sharp persuasion is necessary. Yes. Now will you come out? Nay! Right. 
<laughs> Shaving foam seems to have completely covered Mr. Claypool. <laughs> well, after all, he's only a little shaver. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't work yourself into a lot, Mr. Claypool. Loves <laughs> <laughs> amusing. What am I doing in there now? <laughs> we cannot tell. You're completely covered in the foam. Since you find the inside of the lamp so interesting, you shall both see it at closer quarters. <laughs> And there you will remain until I release you. <laughs> Here, have you been out in the snow, Mr. Claypole? And now, for you, lovely lady, I am enslaved by your beauty. I am yours to command. I would gladly live for you. Don't bother. Oh, come now. You cannot reject my friendship. I appeal to you as a woman. But you don't even appeal to me as a man. Well, he's not a man. He's a spook. And now, have you decided which one of you is playing the genie? Yes! No! no. <laughs> Look, if you can't make up your mind who plays what I shall decide for you, Mr. Claypole will be the genie. Well, what about Mr. Mumford and myself? I trust that we shall be given roles that match our talent and acting ability. Oh, yes, you will. You shall play the pantomime horse. Oh, oh nay! Oh, yay! All right, that's it for tonight. We shall start rehearsing again tomorrow no, afternoon. Mr. Mika! Oh. Farewell, oh pretty one. I remain your fervent admirer and your friend to boot. Don't tempt me. Mr. Mika, please. Good night, Good night, Good night Marjorie. Me. It's coming along very nicely, dear. Which is more than I can say for you, Ethel Mika. I am very worried about the way you are playing Aladdin. It lacks sincerity. It lacks conviction. It lacks. Credibility. Oh, oh, what a oh, 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 I think he's wonderful. And that's not just my opinion, it's his too. Oh, hello. Uh, Adam Painting. Oh, uh, you, you came and haunted my fancy dress party last year. Do you remember? I was dressed as Dracula. Oh, yes. <laughs> We didn't recognize you without the fangs. <laughs> How interesting that you're doing a, a Mika Dramatic Society pantomime. I believe this is the third production they've done this year. Did you see their last show? I do hope so. Oh. <laughs> Only joking. Anyway, I heard your jingle for Renter Santa today, and I was wondering whether you'd care to come and work in my department store as Father Christmas. What, all three of us? Well, yes! Yeah. <laughs> oh, splendid. Come and see me in the store tomorrow. <laughs> oh, Apple, oh, hello there. I, I, I saw you in that springtime in Transylvania and <laughs> loved it. Mind you, I've got dreadful taste. <laughs> oh, I do envy you all this. I've always wanted to go on the stage. <laughs> oh, hi, little lady. Oh, now, look, Apple, as I was saying, your Latin is a cardboard character. It's two-dimensional. It lacks subtlety. May I remind you that the last time I played Aladdin, the local... Local newspaper critic was most impressed by the way I built up the character layer by layer. He said, and I quote, mm, Ethel Meeker's Aladdin grows on you. If it grow on me, I'd chop it off. Now, look, Ethel, you can't just switch off after rehearsal. You have to live this part really? every minute really? of the day. <laughs> what an excellent idea for improving her performance. Very well, Mistress Meeker shall live the part. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Meeker. Sorry to trouble you, but we called at the office to see Fred and found the place closed. We thought you might know what he was doing. Ah, yes. Well, he's got a job in a department store. I've got the address written down oh, somewhere. Okay. Would you like to come in here and sit down? Oh, okay. thank you, yes. Uh, before I get the address, perhaps you'd like a Christmas drink. Welcome, good friends. Gracious lady, may I bid you good day? And to you, good fellow, a thousand felicitations. <coughs> May I wish you a pleasant stay here in old Pekin? I always thought it was South Ealing. <laughs> <laughs> Ethel, haven't you got some work to do? Uh, uh, perhaps you'd like a nice little Christmas drink? <gasps> Capital idea! Soon I must leave you. I have to give my wicked uncle his desserts. I would like to boil a banana in oil. Well, don't let us keep you from your cooking. A toast to love! Life and happiness! <laughs> Turns out quite nice for the time of the year. <laughs> quite balmy outside. Yeah, it's quite balmy in here, too. Devil, please! <laughs> I'll just get that address where your son is working. <laughs> I bet I know what you want. You want to know where Freddie Mumford is. Who 
wants to know where Freddie Mumford is. Me, please. <laughs> I don't hear much from this side of the house. Come on, you can shout louder than that side. Who wants to know where Freddie Mumford is? Perhaps I was wrong. Perhaps you don't want to know where Freddie Mumford is. Oh, yes, we do. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, oh yes, yes, we do. do. Oh, oh, no, you don't. Oh, oh yes, yes, Here is the address where your son is working. Oh, Ethel, give me the address. Ethel, give me the address. I'll use the glass for you. Ethel, please. Ethel, 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 I must apologise for the way my wife is behaving. She's been acting like this ever since rehearsal yesterday. I think she's letting her imagination uh, run away with her. Well, I hope they'll be very happy together. Now, I want you all to join in with me after four. Four. <laughs> Raise the roof, it doesn't belong to you. Now, painting's great department store, North Street number 134. A painting's great. Never will you be quiet? No, Evan, get on with the housework. Oh, God! No, Evan. Ah! 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 Ah!
to see me in person. I shall materialise sitting at the bottom of the chimney. H-O-R-S-E. Well, Mr. Claypole's very busy, so I don't think we can get rid of the H-O-R-S-E. Oh, <laughs> oh, will you get him out of this room? No way will I eat my dinner with a horse sitting at the table. Well, perhaps I could put it in the sitting room. Well, no, that's not a very good idea. There's a, there's a bear patch on the carpet where it's been grazing. Here, look, get it. <laughs> look, you rag stallion, you get off that seat before I turn the moths on you. All right, Ethel. I shall go. I said, I shall go. Sit. Oh, sorry to trouble you again, Mr. Lincoln, but uh, they told you at the department store Fred was out making deliveries or something. So I can't give him the Christmas cake I'd made for him, and I'm afraid it'll go stale if it isn't in something, and all the shops are shut. What so my I've wife got is perhaps... trying to say is, can you lend us a tent to keep the cake in? <gasps> I think we've got one in the kitchen. So I'll just see if I can find it. Will you sit up straight and take your horse off the table? Oh, Phil, she's having dinner with a horse. Who is? Mrs. Meeker. 
This is a kind of a horse. Must be very fond of her. It keeps leaning over and nuzzling her neck. Probably trying to get at the straw in her head. I told you we shouldn't have come back to this nut house. Uh, there you are. Now, if you'll excuse me, Martina is waiting. Well, don't choke on your nose bag, will you? Just hear those sleigh bells jingling, ring, ting, tingling too. Come on, it's lovely weather for a sleigh ride together with you. Out here the snow is falling and friends are calling you. Come on, it's lovely weather for a sleigh ride together with you. Giddy up, giddy up, giddy up, let's go. Let's look at the show. We're riding on a wonderland of snow. Giddy up, giddy up, giddy up, it's grand. Let's strike up the band. We're gliding along with the song of a wintry fairy land. craves attention. Oh, now it wants its tummy tickled. All right. Mm. Tickle, 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 tickle,
genial menial who never shot or makes a fuss. He never went to school, but he has learned his magic ABC. And now he loves to slay for me and wait upon me constantly. Yes, now he loves to slay for me and wait upon me constantly. What is it in the script? No. Well, then it must be the telephone. Oh, you must be the telephone. Now, the next part of the scene is where the genie transports the princess to Aladdin's house while she is asleep. Now, could we have a spectacular magic effect for that, Mr. Claypole? Uh, Mr. Claypole, yes. Oh, uh, certainly. I, the genie, will make you, the pretty princess, appear magically floating in midair, yet fast asleep. Thus. Good, Mr. Claypool. You might have asked her first. Harold, you want it on the phone. It's urgent. Anybody seen that? Will you get Marjorie down? <laughs> Fair one, I do apologize for the inconvenience. You know, when I first met Mr. Claypool, I didn't like him very much. But now that I know him better, I can't stand him. She does love me. Oh, no, she doesn't. <laughs> Stupid nag! Come on! Harold! Harold, he just trod on Mr. Arkwright's foot and broken his big toe, so that's that! We've lost our widow, Twanky! That's not the only thing we've lost, Ethel. That phone call was from the warehouse. All our furniture for the pantomime has gone up in smoke. There isn't gonna be any pantomime. Oh, no! I shall answer it in mind. <laughs> oh, Adam Painting here. I've just been taking an inventory of the furniture in my department store. So? So, I'll come straight to the point. I have the pieces of furniture you require for your pantomime, and you, I am told, have a vacancy in the role of Widow Twanky. Need I say any more? The part's yours. Splendid. You can start rehearsing tomorrow. Oh, Ethel, there's going to be a pantomime after all. Oh, Ethel. <laughs> Not one, not two, but three genies. This makes our pantomime unique. <laughs> How's your sore throat, Mr. Meeker? Well, my speaking voice is all right, but my singing voice sounds terrible. Now you pass your nasty germs onto me and my singing voice is getting worse. Supposing I lose my voice altogether? Have no fear, for I can restore your singing voices to normal. I beg your pardon. <laughs> What I mean is, um, why doesn't he give you unbelievable singing voices? Very well. When it is time for your next duet, you shall both sing unbelievably. Oh, Air Force! Oh, ah. oh, hello, boys and girls. Oh, I'm so happy I've got all the money in the world. If only I had beauty. Your wish! Is my command. I said beauty, not the beast. <laughs> <laughs> what cute about a little cutie? It's her beauty, not brains. Old Father Time will never harm you if your charm still remains. After you grow old, baby, you don't have to be a cold baby. Keep young and beautiful. It's your duty to be beautiful, so keep young and beautiful. If you want to be loved, don't fail to do your stuff with a little powder and a pump, so keep young and beautiful. If you want to be loved, if your eyes exercise all the fat off, take it off, off of here, off of there. If you're seen anywhere with your hat on, have a Marcel wave in your hair. Take care oh. of all your chance, and you'll always be in someone's arms. So keep young and beautiful if you want to be loved. If you want to be loved. If you want to be loved. Oh, you know I could have 
Milton. How? Oh, oh, the genies. The genies. What? The genies of the lamp. Lamp. What lamp? Oh, the magic lamp that grants your every wish and is owned by my son, Aladdin. That lamp shall be mine. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, say something lovely. Uh, uh, oh, feels a bit choked. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's a funny man. Uh, oh, boys and girls, here comes the Sultan, Aladdin, the Princess, the Three Genies, and all of the King. Hello, Mother. Oh, hello, son. Why so sad? This oh. is a happy time, a time for singing. <laughs> Something that can be done by two For I really like to say It's a lovely day today And whatever you've got to do I just have to be doing it with you What's oh, 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 oh. the voice spell has gone wrong? If you got something that must be done And you can only be done by one There is nothing more to say Very well correcting the voice spell, but the damage is done now. You've made us look such fools that the audience aren't taking you seriously anymore. They've completely lost interest in the story. Now what are we going to do? Regain their interest, that's what. <coughs> look, as actors you have to make them involved, give them something to believe in. Oh, thank goodness Mr and Mrs Mumford are here. At least they're on our turn. A splendid idea, but he needs a little magical assistance, so be it. Henceforth, Master Mumford's parents shall completely believe all that they see on stage. You let gross, you let gross. You have come at the right moment, good fellow. I have just found this old lamp in my husband's palace. And now the power of the lamp is mine. <laughs> Seize the princess oh. and take all Aladdin's rope. <laughs> This one. Oh, Phil, this is terrible. What are we going to do? I get down out of sight. Don't let them see we're witnesses, and I'll go and phone the police. Oh, I was just about to phone the police. I, I, I want to report a crime. I see, sir. And just where did this crime take place? Uh, at the palace. You see, this villain spoke to the princess. Palace? And then he did tried... you say princess? This is PC Meadows speaking. Urgent request. Send a squad car straight out to the palace and stand by for further details. Now, can you describe this man? Well, he was shouting, new lamps for all. And then he rubbed Aladdin's lamp and the genies appeared. Cancel that squad car, will you? It's a hoax. All right, honey boy. What's your name, man? Phil Mumford. No none saw her go. My daughter has vanished. And I hold you, her husband, responsible. And you shall be punished. <gasps> A hoax, he said, and he took my name. Oh, Phil, it's terrible. Abanaza stolen the princess, and the Sultan's blaming Aladdin. What has all that lad's done for him? I, the Sultan, decree that you shall be punished, flogged, and banished to boot. Oh, of all oh. the cruel vindictive pigs, you swines, you won't get away with this. Oh, don't get involved. I don't want it. Don't you worry, young fellow, my lad. Get him up there, not a finger on you. I'll see to that. No, help me! Help me! Help me! Mr. Cable, do something! Mr. Cable! Pay me your wish, and I will obey. Oh, send Ethel's mother away on a five-year holiday every I'm not going to be able to do this. 
And there we end children's programmes on BBC One for today.